Our theme for this weekend is Christian freedom. And speaking of Christian freedom, our next speaker, who's going to kick off our speaking portion of the conference, we're excited to have a woman who was born into a Jehovah's Witness family who spent many years in a Watchtower organization. Today, Elaine has dedicated herself to informing the public of the dangers of Jehovah's Witnesses. Her YouTube channel, JW Escape, her videos that appear a few times a week average thousands of viewers, many of which I suspect are active Jehovah's Witnesses. Elaine recently became an author with her recently released 30 Days of Truth that will renew your mind from a God who is love. And she will be sharing her personal testimony. Remember, we're speaking of Christian freedom and her journey to freedom in the biblical Jesus. So please welcome to the podium, Elaine. I'm just going to advance the slides for you, oh. so you just have to say slide. Okay. There you go. Oh, you're, oh, you're wired up. You're good. Hi. Well, it's so wonderful to be here. Um, we actually just arrived, and we, um, we rushed here and um, got here on time, so praise the Lord, and, and we prayed in the car, so it's so nice to be here in Texas to be with you. My name is Elaine, and... Um, I have quite a story. I've been praying for 16 years for the Jehovah's Witness community, and I never dreamed that the Lord was going to put me in full-time ministry, and he, that is one thing that he certainly did. So I'm a survivor along with many of you. Are there any former Jehovah's Witnesses in the audience? Awesome. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. So. Somebody is advancing my slides. I'm ready to go to the next slide. Okay. So what I want to do is I just want to tell you the basics about myself. I was born and raised into the organization Second Generation. Uh, we lived not far from Brooklyn, Bethel. And uh, my entire immediate family, they're still indoctrinated in this organization. My dad became a ministerial servant and an elder, presiding overseer. He used to take me to Bethel with him to pick up the literature. Not only did we have to buy our own literature at that time, but uh, we had to go to Brooklyn and pick it up and then peddle it for free. Can you believe that? So <clears throat> I'm a Jehovah's Witness elders kid, and I escaped at the age of 23. You know, I was, a, I was a shy kid, I was a tomboy, and I don't know, I just, just was something about me. I'm the youngest, I'm the baby, the ba baby of my whole family, and there was just something not right about the organization. I believed it, but I, I just, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't grasp it. And I know the Lord protected my mind because I'd go to the meetings, and probably like a lot of you, I would totally zone out. And I, I used to do this thing in my mind as they were speaking. I would spell words in my mind, forwards and backwards, and, and they would say Bible names like Melchizedek, and I would spell them in my mind, forwards and backwards. I believe it was a protection that I wasn't drinking in that propaganda and hypnotism and indoctrination because I was in my own little world. And even my sister, when I was getting out, she said, you, you never paid attention. I'm like, that's right. Praise God for that. So I, um, you know, basically was not allowed to date and um, there was a, a new brother had, who had left Bethel and moved into our congregation and my dad liked his dad and my dad was like, there you go, that's, that's him. So I married him and he was a, really a nice man but he, he was just, he didn't want to be a witness and um, he's still a witness today. But anyway, you know what, one night I just I mean, I knew at the age of t at 13, I wanted to get out, but how does a 13-year-old girl get out of the Jehovah's Witness organization? They, you can't, you, you, you leave, you, you become homeless. 
Well, I endured until the age of 23, and one night I walked out, and I never went back. I left my husband, my family, my religion, my home, and I turned to strangers begging for help. This was in the late 80s. I became homeless. I wasn't living on the street, but the decisions that I made made sure that I did not live on the street. And the Lord protected me. Um, the elders, they hunted me. I wrote a formal letter of ex excommunication and they refused to accept it. And then some time went by and then I had heard that it was announced at the meetings that um, I was disfellowshipped. And you know what, while I, I was distraught that, well, I mean, you, they interrogated me. I ended up going back because the elders wanted to talk to me and they interrogated me for what seemed like hours and hours and it was two to three hours, but it, it felt like an eternity. And I was so exhausted. I was doing one of these things like, oh, please. They kept asking me the same questions and they were like, you're on drugs. Look at you. You're doing this. I'm like, I'm exhausted. You're beating me down. You're breaking me down. And I refused to go back. So. I left my worldview. That was one thing that I did was I left my worldview. Could we go to the next slide, please? Let's see where, um, you know, I, I just did not know what to believe because I was no longer a Jehovah's Witness. And what do you believe? I felt that I was no longer worthy. If we could go to the next slide, please. So, <clears throat> When you're a Jehovah, you know, a lot of people have asked me, why did you leave? Well, why did I leave? I left because I had a shattered mind. This was what we were taught. This was my life. This was, now these are more modern pictures, but this is what being a Jehovah's Witness is all about. Can we go to the next slide, please? So, <clears throat> the children's books, if you remember these pictures, this was what I believed as a child. I remember I was reading a novel one time. I was, I was a, maybe 11 years old. I read Gone with the Wind. It was like this thick. And I was so fascinated. It was over the summer. Wow, what a great book, you know? And I was, I was punished because I was caught reading something other than this. So why did I leave the Jehovah's Witness organization? My mind was shattered with all of this nonsense. So next slide, please. So I finally get the courage to leave at the age of 23. And I, I'm lost. I barely made any money at all. I, you know, I quit school at the end of 10th grade. I worked at a bank. Um, fortunately, praise God, I, I went back to college and I, I got a bachelor's degree after that because that was such a tremendous goal of mine was an education. I got that. I have a bachelor's degree. But I was floundering around. What do I believe? I believed nothing. I, all I was trying to do was survive. And um, I, one day after, after work, I was angry. I was lost. I was alone. I was living on somebody's couch that I didn't even know. And one of my coworkers looked at me, she put her hands on my shoulders and she said, don't you know, God is love? And she walked away. And I was in my early 20s and little does she know that that phrase, God is love, shook me to my core. I had never heard it before. The Lord was working in me and I didn't, I didn't even know who the Lord was. I thought the Lord was this angry, evil entity for whom I could not, never be good enough, whom I rejected because when I walked out at the age of 23, I said, if this is what serving God is like, then serving the devil cannot be any worse. I thought I had sold my soul to the devil. And when I heard that, it was like a, a gust of wind that nearly 
knocked me over. And the thing is, is my, uh, my coworker, I think her name was Kim, she has no idea that those three words that she said to me rocked my world. She walked away. I don't know that I really ever talked to her again. I barely knew her, but she ministered to me. And one day in heaven, she will know. So friends, listen, if you, are, if you ever talk to somebody and you walk away and you say, why did I say that? People looked at me like I was kind of weird. Well, you know what? The Lord may have led you to say something that a person needed to hear at the time. And 30 years later, she's still talking about it. So let's go to the next slide, please. So, you know, as a Jehovah's Witness, Ephesians 4.14 um, speaks volumes because, listen, I floundered around for 20 years living a life of defeat after I got out. I was um, uh, an evolutionist, but I didn't even know who Charles Darwin was. I had no idea what evolution meant. I just knew that I had turned my back on God, okay? I was an agnostic, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what I believe. I just floundered chasing after anything I could, was never at peace. And after 20 years, Ephesians 4.14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. This is what happened to us. I was tossed to and fro as a Jehovah's Witness, and then when I left that, before I found the Lord, I was tossed to and fro, totally lost. So next slide, please. You know, what I basically ended up doing was, after my family had shunned me for 15 years, I said to myself, what is the driving force behind this crazy religion that my family members have shunned me for 15 years, that I have nieces and nephews that I've never met? So I started doing some research and I put my religion, my former religion, under a microscope and I was completely shocked. Next slide, please because I found out things that I never ever dreamed could be true about what I was involved in. Next slide, please. And this occurred in 2004, and when I put my former religion under a microscope, all hell broke loose. Next slide, please. I started researching day and night, 17 hours a day. I slept at my desk because I started, almost from the beginning, I started to research Russell, and I learned things that I could not believe. My whole life had been a lie, and so many of you can relate to this, but when, when you understand, when you've learned that everything about your life was a lie, it's panic. You want to panic. What in the world do I do? So that was a 90-day period. I had notebooks and notebooks and notebooks, and I fell into despair because I learned all, all about Russell, Rutherford, the, the, the NGO issue where they were a part of the United Nations, the Malawi scandal, subliminal images. I read the first ex-Jehovah's Witness book I read before Ray Franz's was 30 Years of Watchtower Slave. Has anybody read that by William Schnell? Wow. That, that book, the, in this book he talks about how he and his father, they were in Rutherford days and they came up with the, the, the cult programming techniques. And in the forward to the book on William Schnell's on his father's deathbed, he said, Son, have we been wrong about our religion? And yes, you were wrong about your religion. And it just rocked my, my life that my whole life had been a lie. So next slide, please. You know, I ended up researching so much that I scared myself half to death 
because when I decided to research my religion, I ended up in some really, really dark stuff. And I had pieces to the puzzle and notebooks, and I, I kept adding and writing with a frenzy. And one night, that puzzle, those puzzle pieces started to come together, and I realized I was not serving the God of the Bible. That when I walked away from this religion, I did not turn my back against God. I did not turn my back on God. I was actually serving the devil as a Jehovah's Witness. And I was in my bed and literally shaking in fear. Every part of my body was reacting to this. How am, uh, my thoughts were, how am I going to go on? How am I going to survive? I took it too far. I learned too much. I am so scared because I had this picture of evil and it was so scary. But listen, I had an independent thought. I feel like that was the second independent thought I had in my whole life. The first independent thought was to leave that organization. The second independent thought was, wait a minute, if I wasn't serving God, then who is God? Because I have this picture of evil. Now I want to know who God is. So I, I couldn't get off, off of the bed. I couldn't get out of the covers. I ran. I ran through my house, out my French doors, onto my deck, and I fell flat on my face, and I cried out to a God, and I did not know. I don't know how long I was out there, but I was crying and sobbing and begging, which, you know what? All I had to do was seek, and, and, he, and Jesus says, seek, and you will find. All I had to do was knock, and he would open the door, but in my agony, in my despair, I begged God to reveal himself to me. I felt like a bowl of jello. It just jiggles. It's got nothing to it. That's what I felt like. I felt like I had no skeletal, skeletal system. I was a lump of nothing on the floor crying out to God. Next slide, please. And I'll tell you something. I was hysterical. And I had just been shaking in fear and crying. All of a sudden, I sat up. I wiped the tears off my face, and he saved me. Ephesians 4.14, I believe, was fulfilled in me at that moment. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Because you know what? I, I sat up calm as I am now. I stood up. I went in my house. I walked in the opposite direction to my kitchen. In, in my bedroom on the other side of the house, I have a really you know big closet organiz, organizer. I dragged my my kitchen ladder, which you know I need a ladder for everything. And I went in my bedroom. I climbed to the tippy top, and I reached up, and I reached up. And I was like, oh, wow! I had placed a Bible up there 15 years earlier, and I got that Bible out, went in the same bed, and I read from page one, and I finished that thing in 90 days. And let me tell you, I went all through the Old Testament. And I sobbed and cried when I, get, when I met the God of the Old Testament and fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice. And I'd never heard those stories. Watchtower stories were always focused on the evil in scripture when, you know, the Witch of Endor story and, you know, all, all, the, all the, the, the demonic parts of scripture it seemed that you know the story of David when, when David had sinned and when Saul tried to pin him to the wall we didn't hear about the blessings and the amazing aspects of scripture and and I cried through that and then I got to the four gospels and Jesus was healing because I still didn't know what Jesus had done for me I was learning and you know Jesus would heal and then he would tell the people, you know, you're healed now. Go you show yourself to the high priest so that you can be declared clean. And I'm like, well, why? Why were they doing that? And Jesus would say, don't tell anybody that I healed you. Well, why? And, you know, well, Jesus, it wasn't his time to be revealed. And he was still preaching to the Jews under the law. And then I got to Paul's Gospels, and it all made sense. 
that we're saved by grace through faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. And I realized who Jesus was and what he did for me. And I couldn't believe it. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is also what happened to me, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, that fear never came back. I have no fear. The only time I'll experience fear Every once in a while, maybe once every two years, I might have a nightmare and wake up afraid. I, that fear never came back. That's the one thing. As a Jehovah's Witness, I was afraid all the time. Right, Martha? I was afraid of the day. I was afraid of the dark. I was afraid to, you know, money. There might be a demon on the money they told us or get something used. There might be a demon on that. Right? And I was afraid to close my eyes. I might see demons on my eyelids. You know how like when you look at a light and then you could close your eyes? I, I was afraid of everything. God took that fear away from me. Could we go to the next slide, please? And it never came back. So listen, when I, after I did my research, I never stopped researching. I have been researching fervently since 2004. And when I, when I, when those piece, puzzle pieces came together and I recognized what the organization was all about, I started to pray and pray and pray and weep because my family members were still in this nightmare, still living that nightmare, and they still are, my whole family. I've been shunned by them and my family and friends for more than 30 years now. I have nieces and nephews, and they have children that I've never met, okay? But God gave me such a piece of it, a piece about it. Listen, all the animosity and anger that I used to have left me. And you know, when something, when we give something up, whatever that may be, there's a void there. So what was that, that anger and animosity replaced with? The Lord replaced it with compassion. Here, a former Jehovah's Witness who was cold, I was very cold, emotionless. I didn't show my emotions. You can't show weakness. You can't show it. You have to pretend everything is good, right? Because if you're not showing that everything is okay in your life, then there's something wrong with you. So this cold, expressionless, angry woman with animosity all God took it all away and he replaced it with compassion and love and empathy who knew I could ever experience those types of emotions right former Jehovah's Witness I started praying and praying and praying and praying and weeping and praying for my family then I started praying for 15 years for the Jehovah's Witnesses. And my prayer would go like this, when, Lord, when, when is it gonna be time for the cult members to be able to break free of that programming and see when? I could never imagine that there would be crimes that are going to start being exposed. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for 15 years. And then, you know what, I guess the Lord said, well, Elaine, um, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. And the desires of your heart is for the cult members to hear the gospel. I, listen, I'm kind of shy. I, in social settings, I, I am. I'm kind of shy. I don't, I'm not at the forefront. I kind of like linger around the back. And, and um, I guess the Lord was like, well, you know what? I'm going to speak through you anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I decided one day to make a YouTube video, and I thought I would make only one, and, and people started watching it and commenting and asking me, hey, do this and do that. And I was like, okay. So I made another and then another and then another. And, um, you know, there's a lot of ex-Jehovah's Witness YouTubers, and they have 
good messages. They, they preach on, you know, um, leaked letters and, and Watchtower News and, and you know, what, whatever they do. But I don't know that there's very many of them that give these people hope. And I lived a life of defeat for 20 years after I escaped. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to give them hope. I wanted them to know the truth and the freedom in Christ. And that's what I started doing, and that's what my YouTube channel is all about. And what I do is I, um, one of the things that I do is I recap the Sunday study articles so that the PIMOs, P-I-M-O, physically in, mentally out, they can't get out because they lose everything. So here they are. Could you imagine, could you imagine being in Bethel and being a PIMO? And what do these people do? They have to sit there and they have to go to, you know, do these Watchtower study articles every week so they find my channel. My goal is to get them before they get out and then become an atheist, not realizing that Jehovah of a watchtower, that evil entity, is different. It's a false god. It's not the god of the Bible. So these people start watching my videos because they want to see what are the XJWs saying, and they're hearing the gospel. And I get comments like, Elaine, you've saved my life. Well, of course, we know that, they're, that the Lord is leading them to me, but they're hearing truth for the first time through my, my videos. And I praise the Lord that he's using me to do this. Who ever knew? He's speaking through me on my YouTube channel, and I'm, and I'm, I'm so blessed, blessed by that. It, could we have another slide? Do I have another slide? Okay. So what I did was... I wrote a devotional because it's one thing to get out of the Jehovah's Witness organization, but then what? You have to replace the lies. If you don't replace the lies, then you're going to just still live a life in, the de in a life of defeat. You just don't have to go to meetings anymore, right? So I wrote this devotional, 30 Days of Truth That Will Renew Your Mind from a God Who Is Love. You know what? It's just every day you get a, a truth, you are free from sin. Replace those lies. And you get a, a scripture, commentary, and then a place where you can write. Listen, uh, there's hope. Jesus Christ died for us, and, and we're saved by grace. We don't have to work anymore. All those years that we knocked on doors and pioneered and 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 peddled as unpaid salesmen for this publishing company and the whole time god was drawing us to himself for the truth to know the truth the real truth that jesus died for us so that's it that's my story and it's such a pleasure to be here and um, turn to christ uh, he'll save you friends that's it thanks <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good way to start things off. What do you all say? Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. You know, one of the things that Elaine said that I thought about was this. And many of us who are involved in trying to reach witnesses, you know, to get them out is one thing. But I'll tell you what, I think it's a sham to get them out and to leave them there. That's not what it's about. It's about what happens next. As I was talking about earlier, so many people, and as Elaine pointed out, so many people are out there on YouTube, and yeah, they're hitting the organization, they're saying all these great things, but it's like, I'm sitting there watching some of them and going, but where, what's next? And that's why it's so refreshing to watch Elaine's channel and what she's doing and what she's saying.